Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am Karen Mercer, the seminarian here at Sherwood. It's my pleasure to welcome you this morning to Sherwood Episcopal Church on this Sunday, January 23rd. Hello to those of you who are present with us this morning and those of you who are joining us by Facebook Live. It is wonderful to be able to say that we are one body in Christ. As is our custom, we have a few announcements at the beginning of the service. For those who are watching um, on Facebook Live, we would suggest that you go to the website at um, SherwoodCockeysville.org. Click on the button that says Worship, and from there you can navigate to get the bulletin so that you can follow along in our service this morning. We want to once again welcome Reverend Joanne Totralt, who is here back with us this morning. Uh, during the absence of Mother Nancy while she is away on vacation. We welcome Reverend Joanne with us this morning and we are just happy that she is here to celebrate with us and also she is the preacher for the day. Mother Nancy will be on vacation until January 27th um, and if there are any um, emergencies or any needs that anyone has, please feel free to call Carrie, uh, our parish administrator or um, Bernice Arnold, who is the parish, um, um, who is the senior warden. Also, uh, the last announcement that I have is that you can expect to see your year-end statements coming in the mail in the next few days. If you do not have them by January 31st, then please contact Carrie. All right, so let us just take a moment right now to just center ourselves and prepare for worship as we listen to the hymns, participate in the prayers, and hear the preached word. Good morning again. Thank you. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Nehemiah. All the people of Israel gathered together in the square before the water gate. They told the scribe, Ezra, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest, Ezra, brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square, before the water gate, from early morning until midday. In the presence of the men and the women, and those who could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
the word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 19. We will read responsibly by whole verse. The heavens declare the glory of God, and firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to to another, and one night night imparts imparts knowledge knowledge to to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep he has set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth Forth from from the the uttermost uttermost edge of the heavens and runs runs about to the the end of it again. again. Nothing Nothing is is hidden hidden from from its burning burning heat. heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. Fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More, more to, to be, be desired, desired are they gold. than gold. More than as much fine gold, sweeter far, far than honey, than honey, and honey in the comb. comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and keeping them is a great work. There is great reward. Who can, Who can tell, tell how, how often he offends? offends. Cleanse me, me from, from my secret, secret faults. faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The second reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For, the, for in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with great respect, with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there, are, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members that have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now if, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, 
forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. When I was a few months out of seminary and still navigating the newness of ordained life, I remember sitting down to write my first Easter sermon and feeling very anxious about the importance of this task and about the blank computer screen in front of me. Because as we know, on Easter, expectations run very high. Not only because of the joy of the day, but because of what we've been through leading up to the day as hearers of the story, the betrayal, the death, the utter loss of the people's way. And yet all of this is followed by the revelation of something utterly new. Thankfully, a good friend and mentor who at that time had been a priest for 20 years helped to ease my anxiety with a little bit of truthful humor. He said the drama of what happens in scripture lets the Easter story speak for itself. There's not a whole lot more we can say about it, except yes and amen. So I try to imagine myself stepping up on the pulpit with my new flock full of expectation and doing just that. Jesus is risen, yes and amen. It didn't happen that way. But our gospel reading 
is striking because of the simplicity and the directness of the message that those assembled heard. The words of the prophet Isaiah that Jesus read spoke for themselves. And with all eyes upon him, he delivered the simplest of sermons. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Yes and amen. And that was it. The plainness and the truth of who I am, Jesus was trying to tell them. Who I am and what I am here to do is fulfilled now. The long wait for the Messiah is over. The time of projecting God's dream for us is no longer in the future. As Matthew and Mark said, the word made flesh is very near you, among you, showing you how God is doing a new thing. And yes, not only showing you, but as you hear it, calling you to respond, to embody that new thing. Now, as truth tellers do, Jesus took a big risk that day. His stark words were not received very well, because as the story goes on to say, all in the synagogue were filled with rage, and they tried to run him off and hurl him off a cliff. Why? Why? Well, for one thing, when a teacher or a prophet read the sacred text aloud, the people assembled expected to hear interpretation of the text. As in the passage that we heard from Nehemiah, where the very basis of Jewish sacred text, the Torah, was being revealed to them. I suppose there's a certain safe distance in hearing the words, hearing the prophet's interpretation, and going about your way. But Jesus said no. All of scripture is fulfilled now, here, right now in front of us. We can start there, but hearing alone isn't enough. In turn, there's an expectation, an exhortation by God and by the prophets that he chose, that people would hear the word and respond in action. Action brings change. Change means taking risks. Change means standing up for others. And that is a place where vulnerability and strength meet. The prophet Isaiah stood up for others. He stood up for the exiled people of Jerusalem who had been living in captivity for about 70 years. It was time for a change for those people. So Isaiah stood up for them, these vulnerable exiles, and called on God to remember that God had made a promise to those people to redeem them, to bring them justice, to restore them to their place of home. Jesus, too, stood up for people. He stood up for the blind, the lepers, women, so-called foreigners, and all those who were considered weak and were outcast, who were shunned by the powerful imperial forces. And it was time for a change. Jesus came to flip that power structure on its head, right? When we stand up for others, we come in between the powerful and the vulnerable. And our part in that is clear. It goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. We are stewards. We are caretakers. We take an active part. We are co-creators with God of the new thing that God is always doing. So how? How do we embody that? How can we act on what we hear? 
My bet is we're all doing it in some way. So, for instance, for anyone who has cared for an aging person or an ill or dying loved one, you know that you have to speak up, sometimes challenging authority to get that person the care they need. So you know what I mean. For anyone who has been discriminated against in any way, overtly or covertly, because of your skin color, your gender, a physical limitation, because of who you love or where you come from, you know what I mean. For anyone who has seen or lived or lives among the devastating effects of poverty, the forgotten neighborhoods in our cities, the lack of good education and jobs and access to those, the hungry people that are reduced to shells at times, you know what I mean. In this particular time in our history, for anyone who is suffering from disease, abuse, widespread inequality, and greed in our society, these are the very things that Jesus and Isaiah and all the modern prophets came to obliterate. If you have experienced those, you know what I mean. When we stand up and put ourselves between a powerful entity and a vulnerable one, we set change in motion. We make a new thing happen with God. So last weekend, and Monday of last week in particular, this nation commemorated the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., or a senior, Dr. Martin Luther King. You know the one I mean. He stood up for other people. He continually put himself between the powerful and the vulnerable. And he was determined not to rest until people who were mired in poverty and oppression by segregation were set free of that and restored to hope. And although the MLK holiday, as we designate it, has come and gone, we cannot and ought not to simply let that day and that weekend come and go without recalling his words and his actions to keep them alive in these days when for many they are just a distant memory, if that. As many of you may remember, Dr. King was jailed in Birmingham, Alabama for leading a demonstration of nearly 1,000 people into the city's business district after law enforcement ruled that all street demonstrations against segregation were illegal. And from his cell, he wrote a powerful letter to encourage a group of fellow clergy who had criticized his actions. I encourage you to read or reread the letter from Birmingham jail. A small portion of this powerful document says this, and I quote, oppressed people cannot remain oppressed forever. The yearning for freedom eventually manifests itself. The theologian Paul Tillich has said that sin is separation. Segregation is an expression of man's tragic state of separation. We will have to repent in this generation, not merely for hateful words and actions of some, but for the appalling silence of some. For human progress never rolls in on the wheels of inevitability, but it comes through the tireless efforts of people willing to be co-workers with God." End quote. The whole human experience is one of people in various forms of separation from one another, 
and from God, the human experience is one of people in various forms of struggle. And the work to achieve a balance goes on and on. Scripture and history tell us and show us that God does redeem God's people. And that as co-workers with God, that we are all called to stand up for each other, to be the agents of change here on earth, so that indeed a new thing can happen with God working through us so that we can do the work we are called to do. And as Dr. King challenged all within his hearing to act on this truth when he said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Amen. stand as you are able, and let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers prayers of the people. With all our heart and mind, Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Cockeysville, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. We pray especially for those impacted by COVID-19, as well as those on our parish prayer list, Virginia, Timothy, Lewis, Shannon T., Marissa, Bill P., Casey, 
Betsy, Lou D, Wayne L, Nancy C, Koa, Diane B, Kayla, Lorraine, Kathy, Butch, Kyle, Irene, the Williams family, Charlotte, Lou S, the Brown family, and Ryan C. For the blessings of this life, including those celebrating birthdays, especially Susan, as well as anniversaries, especially Kevin and Mother Nancy, and Bill and Karen, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, the Lord our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Please greet one another with the sign of God's peace, safely distanced to all those here in the sanctuary and those watching at home. God's peace be with you. Please uh, remember that uh, Sherwood continues to do God's good work in the world to be co-creators with God. And so um, your support and contributions help immensely in every way in which this community does that. So thank you for that. Um, everyone is welcome at God's table. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty, Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, 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 the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
post-communion prayer is on page 16 of the bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us of these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
go into the world refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation. God commands us to enthusiastically cast open our doors to embrace all, impacting lives through bold service. No exceptions. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.